Ready? Yep, that's good. All right, being at uh, 7 o'clock on February 10th, 2016, we're in this uh, Prudential Committee member, uh, Prudential Committee meeting to order. Um, historically, we've always gone through the minutes and stuff like that first, but we'd like to, first on the agenda, we would like to meet with the Deerfield Select Board, which we have two of them here. Hi, Mark. Hey, how you doing? Hey, you. Hi, Carolyn. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. So, how can we assist you to make a job more efficient and effective, ma'am? Um, well, actually, Mark... What did he say? I got <laughs> What the hell did he say? <laughs> Excuse me? Oh, for yeah, the camera. Okay. Oh, yeah, by the way, everyone, the way just the camera. Okay. be aware that we are we are being taped this evening. You want to say it slower for us old people? Or how at least this old person? We may assist <laughs> you. How can, we, how can we assist you? Well, you were like to think you're all at the you were at the meeting. I was at the meeting, but the, the rest weren't. The so. uh, request was that we were to meet up with the fire department to see what we could do, if anything, to uh, facilitate keeping the ambulance um, in the town of Okay. Um, collectively in the past, I think one of the things that we talked about, and correct me if I'm wrong, is, is we were looking to see if we can have a outside vendor or someone come in to do a study to see the pros and the cons for the fire department, the pros and the cons for the, uh, for the town as far as how we can, how we can make this all work properly. <coughs> um, I have been in touch with the Franklin County COG. Um, and they're in the process of looking at it, bringing it, quote unquote, up the ladder to see how and when they can go ahead and accomplish some type of um, accommodations to be able to come through and, and through a grant or grant monies to be able to go ahead and accomplish this. Um, once again, my general understanding collectively is right now, you know, South County EMS has the ability to stay through FY17, and we did leave a provision for South County EMS to be here through FY18. At FY17 money would be $36,000 a year. Uh, FY18 would be $36,000 a year. No escalator for, for either, either year. Um, again, in the past, Deerfield Rescue has always been more than welcome here, but obviously as soon as it became uh, the enterprise, per se. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's not for profit, but, um, and again, it was being shared with the towns, and that's when we, we decided that, that's when the rent started coming into play. So so that's kind of the, the baseline, once again, for the people that really don't really know what was going on in the past. And by no means is the district throwing the ambulance out of the fire department. Um, we've all basically come to a mutual de decision that South County EMS will be growing to the point that they will have to move because we don't have ample room here to be able to provide the services they want to provide, you know, three ambulances. And, um, and again, we're not sure, you know, if, if anything ever happened in the, in the future, you know, what we're looking at for bunk rooms. Uh, obviously, we'd have to split it between male and female. Um, we have some thoughts on some provisions on possibly splitting this room up, which would take this away as a conference room. But again, these are all things that are that are looking further down the road. Um, that's pretty much. Correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm misspeaking, but that's basically where we're at at this point. Yeah, I mean, from my perspective, as the fire chief, is regardless of what South County EMS does, we've got to provide a service to our residents in the district. And you know, I've actually looked into. I've talked to our firefighters to see if there'd be any interest in becoming EMTs because, you know, I think we're all well aware that South County EMS staffs that first ambulance, no issues at all, minor issues, yeah, some we, shifts we here and there. Yeah. However, the secondary ambulance, I think they've made some changes and it's gotten a little better, but there's still some issues there. And if that doesn't get any better, you know, we'd have to look at 
does the fire district here operate an ambulance similar to how Turner's Falls started out and Greenfield recently started out because their full-time provider wasn't able to meet their needs. So, you know, you know, I was the one who talked to Kevin to see if the, the COG had any money to have a consultant come in similar to the towns did with uh, Bruce Baxter to take a look at South County EMS, you know, to take a look at, you know, the fire district and, you know, our members are dwindling. We don't have what we once had. You know, I think old Deerfield Fire is, you know, in the same situation. They don't have what they once had. So, you know, would it make sense to take a look at all three enterprises, all three agencies at the same time and, and find out what makes the most sense? That's a good point. So. That's good. Good head there. So that's pretty much, I think, where we think we're, our thought process is. I would think that you'd have to have a study. Like well, that's, 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 that's the study. You can't make any is. decisions without having some direction. All right. and, and realistically, you know, one of the things I did ask, and I might have overstepped my bounds a little bit, but I asked, asked them at the same time if they could look to see what the advantages and disadvantages would be of merging the two districts. So what I'm looking at is I'm I'm looking at a I'm looking at a outside, no personal, no history, no this, no that. Somebody from the outside coming in and looking to see if it's feasible or not, how it's feasible, how it would work, how it would not work. But again, it's it's got to be somebody from the outside because there's there's just way too much history within all of both of the departments, and that's going to be the easiest way of, of I think dealing with it. And once again, you know, we're in the process of trying to see if the COG can go ahead and, and kind of blend this in at the same time. Um, it's almost like a two fork. They'll come look at the EMS end of it, but they'll also look at merging the two and see how that plays out. So, not really sure how else, how much further we can go at that point to what we have. Kevin, can I, can I ask for clarification? Um, you extended a, um, the question out to the COG. Yep. To ask about two things. One was the potential, you know, what what would a merger of the two districts involve? What would that look like? Yep. There, fair enough. What was the second thing you asked? Well, actually, the first thing I asked was uh, what what the 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 good, the bad, the ugly of what it is for the district to absorb an ambulance service. Okay. At this point, um, you um, did get a response. I don't yeah, know if I you did, saw. I did. I did talk with Ted, and he okay. in the process right now is running this request up the ladder, quote unquote, is the way it was stated to me. Okay, uh, I believe that Ted got a response. Oh, he did? I just checked my email and I think I was copied on it. Okay, um, I, I didn't look at my email. The email. response was positive in terms of their capability to do um, a study about the merger of the two districts. They yep. said that they would be happy to talk about the scope of that, yep. what that would look like, what that would involve, yep. and that they could find people who could look at the structure of the two districts, well, the structure oh, okay. of the two districts, and and see what the, you know what the impact of that would be, um, the, and this is a response coming from I think Phoebe Walker. Okay. She said in terms of the other question yeah. about the district absorbing the ambulance service, right. she said we will not do that work, okay. the, and she made it very clear that she feels that too much work has been done put into put South into County South County EMS, EMS yeah. and they are not going to. I'm paraphrasing now, right. but they were not interested in assisting anybody in tearing South County EMS down. Right. And, um, and by no means are we trying to tear EMS down. Right. And right. that's, that, that, again, I want to make this perfectly clear. South Terrific Fire District is not by no means going out and stretching out, reaching out to take over EMS. That is, that is not the, the scope. My general understanding is, is because of a few residents within town, um, are, are unhappy of the, the, the ambulance leaving the town, going to Waitley, that once again, like, like the chief said, you know, there's a void that's going to end up happening there if this actually goes to a warrant article and if something happens. But again, by no means is South Deerfield right. Fire District looking to aggressively take over ambulance service. That is not our, we are very strictly looking to cover the residents of our district. We're trying to protect the people that, that we work for, is all we're trying to do. And, and I apologize if I left no. anybody with that impression. Uh, no, I, no, you I, didn't, I just... Okay, yeah, no, I, I just understand. the radio, yeah. or the TV is all I'm trying oh, to get. Oh, that darn TV? Yep. Uh, 
uh, one thing I might suggest is to re-communicate with the COG mm -hmm. um, and maybe just clarify your interests that not absorb structurally, right. but absorb into the physical space, the building, the operations of South County EMS to be able to accommodate the service right. on this site. Maybe, maybe that's what needs to be just clarified to see if they can do that gotcha. study to see what that would look like or offer suggestions. I mean, so. since they're talking about doing a study, mm -hmm. um, I mean, for years we've had meetings trying to get the two districts together, and, right. and and obviously, you know, it's been on everybody's radar that you know we just don't have the young people to volunteer, and, and man, you know, it, I mean, we would look. The trend was towards a full-time fire department right. per personnel, and if you look at the models like Amherst and Northampton, they have the ambulance there. Right. Um, does it make sense if we think big? We have the South County ambulance. Does it make sense to to, mer to have a study about all four fire districts or you know fire departments? I'll answer that one. I mean, as soon as you start, you got to be careful with regionalization because when all of a sudden you have a big incident, the the same people that you would be calling for mutual aid are now on that one department, and you know. There was a great article in the Greenfield Recorder the other day. I mean, 10 years ago, Greenfield Fire would have handled that fire all on their own. You know, and they had to call in multi-other towns because they don't have the call force they once had. I think as you start to professionalize, we saw it with South County EMS. As soon as you professionalize a department, you're, you alienate your volunteers. Turner's Falls Fire is going through it right now. Their call force is dwindling. I think they're looking to bring on at least one or possibly two more people per shift so because of their lack of manpower so you know as you go into you know regionalization you got to be careful because you know you'll you'll be able to get that first apparatus out the door but the second the third the fourth that you need where's those people going to come from okay so i guess because i was thinking you know if you have more full-time fire people and, and you would have full-time but you're saying that you really... But we, you still have to have multiple forward. stations. You know, yeah. the NFPA requires a, a certain response time to certain areas and stuff like that. So you'd still be operating out of, out of multi-stations. I mean, yeah. you know, 20, 30, 40 years down the road, maybe. You know, but I think right now, you know, I, I don't... I, okay. I just think that'd be too expensive. And if, if you alienate your call force, you gain nothing. Oh. You gain nothing because... Not the subject. You, when an engine or something goes somewhere, you have how do you back staff stuff, and how much full time personnel are you going to have to be able to do that? And if you alienate alienate your call force, you gain nothing. We're we're experiencing that with the ambulance service. So right, we exactly. know, yeah, and we were told that when we yeah. went into it that we were going to alienate the, the volunteer group, and we put some things in place to make sure that that took place, but. What the fire districts do and what your plans are, even at the best guess scenario, if you were to think about doing any of this with a cooperative group with the ambulance service or anything of that, how long out are we talking? How long would it take us to even pull something together? To pull something together, even right. start doing it. What would you guess would be your time frame after you got your study and you got the agreement and you got the the thing? How long are we talking before? I think, think it's it's up to the district voters. If they want to support it, I mean, it's going to be, I mean, our payroll right now for one full-time firefighter is $65,000. You know, Turner's Falls Fire, I think their payroll is $600,000. So you're looking at 10 times, you know, the increase. No, I, I realize those things. I'm looking for some sort of snapshot as to if we even did this, do you think it's three years out? Four years out, five years out. Can't even really answer that yeah. until the study's done. You have to have the study, done. and then you have to go through, do the footwork, to find out what's going to work. I mean, that's one of the. I mean, I'll be, I'll be honest. I didn't vote in favor of South County EMS because there was unanswered questions. I fully supported a paramedic service, but in my eyes, there were still a lot of unanswered questions that I think we're answering two or three years later because they weren't answered up front. We and answer. we didn't know the answer. You know, but that's the same thing. If if we do a study here, yeah. you know, and I think we would want to make sure we have as many answers as we could up front instead of okay. falling into the issues that South County EMS is falling into two or three years down I'm the road. Not, I'm not trying to track anybody into any 
commitments of any kind or anything of that nature. If you just take your thought process. I mean, do we, I see, I would see our department, regardless of what we do with the EMS, our department being a full-time service within 10 years, okay. just to cover our district. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Or you know, less. Or less. Just okay. to cover the South Deerfield district? Correct. Okay, so you're talking 10 years max. Maximum at, at your guesstimate at this point in time. Yeah. Realistically, how long before you think that that would even start to get nailed on something? Well, I think what would would start slow, so we, you yeah. know, the, so the tax base wouldn't be that hard. I mean, we're going to do our budget later. One of my recommendations is going to be is January of 2017, you know, to to have a second full-time employee. So it's got that half year, you know, salary. So we we ease into it. We don't shock the tax rate and you know, you, you start to build into it. And you also see what we can get for call force. I mean, you know, our, our numbers are down. I mean, we've probably got 18 people on our roster now. We've probably got 14 that are active that make 40% of the calls. You know, we rely on eight people, really, is what we rely on. I'm familiar with the numbers, and again, I'm not trying to get you to commit to a time frame to do something. What I'm looking at is I have an ambulance service that we have to house. And the and I'll be the first one to jump up and say that it's been very nice here. It's great space. It's not been anything to do with the fire department's position on this at all. It is the ambulance services position that it needs its own home, which you guys acknowledged when we started and said, "Can we live here?" You said, "Yeah, but you're not going to be able to survive here. It's not big enough for what you need." So I've got this entity right now. So my I, recommendation would be don't sign a 10-year lease. I'm not gonna my sign my recommendation <laughs> would be is to do a three-year lease with a couple three-year options. So then that way you're not locked in, you uh, know, and you can take a look at it because as soon as you sign that 10-year lease, you know, you're kind of locked into that space for 10 years. That would be my recommendation. The shorter lease you can negotiate, the better. That allows for other studies to take place. It allows for the Board of Oversights, the Board of Selectmen, the Prudential Committee to all sit down together and work this out. And at South County EMS within, I mean, because realistically, and my general understanding was all three towns said, we are going to give this three years. We're only into year two. We're going into year three. So realistically, the town itself, the towns themselves, or, or us, or, or part of the people within the town, are not allowing it to go to the full, full three years that Again, my understanding, collectively, all three towns said we were going to give South County EMS three years to get it figured out. Because it it's a brand new service, you know, and, and there's a lot of hiccups in the giddy-up that, that they have to get around. There's no doubt about it. And, and staffing is definitely one of the toughest parts to go ahead and do. Um, you know, again, my personal opinion is, is uh, I'd, I'd give them the three years. And moving to Waitley, uh, that, that may be a good thing, but... There's a lot of other little political things that are going on in the background that, that's drama that I care not even to talk about or get into because it's drama and, and I don't need it. Um, so again, to where, and I appreciate, because you're echoing the thought process that a lot of the board members and everybody else has to, what's enough, how much is in enough and everything else. No matter what we do at this point in time, we're pretty sure that three years would be the max that they the earliest possible time that we could take and make any movements. Probably more like a four-year or a five-year window before we could actually do something. I personally, not speaking for the Board of Selectmen nor the Board of Oversight, feel that basically five years from here, from here, from this point in time, we probably won't recognize the service. It will have changed dramatically through evolution of what its needs are, what its functions is. I'm hoping that from my dreams that it will become a huge chunk of a outreach service for our um, town nurse and be able to reach out to the senior populations for um, some training, some programs and stuff of that nature. So I'm hoping that it morphs into something a little bit more than just an ambulance service, although that is a phenomenal function that's happened here in the town from the step forward. And I can legitimately say that because I've been through almost every Evolution, evolution that, that started. So I made so a lot of the mistakes, and I did a lot of the things that probably weren't right, and said probably a few things that weren't spot on. But that's part of growing, and that's how we learn. So what 
when I was asking for those numbers, I was looking for how to gauge how long to mm -hmm. anticipate where we're going to be at. Sure. Um, and um, that was it. There was no other hidden to just agenda or reason or thought process for it. I'm not trying to get somebody to make some decisions that are outside of their time frame. And you, you were spot on. We started off slow, and we basically put on a minimal staff to make what we hoped would match between a volunteer force and a, a full-time force. We didn't bring up the numbers where they needed to be in the first year. We had money left over because we didn't spend it for personnel, but we got criticized for not covering all the shifts. We can't do both. You can't save money, you can't start off slow, and you can't meet all the commitments if you don't have all the personnel in place. So we had to, as a board, and um, there were two members on the board who happened to be board of selectmen members that were key in saying, no, slow down, take your time, think about this, and it's going to bite us in the butt for doing it. But that's okay. That's part of the growing process. Um, so if I've got the message correct at this point in time, we've got a probably a, a three-year window from this period of time in which we, it would take us to negotiate both the, um, the um, studies that need to be done, go through annual town meetings, change the fundamental structures of everything, find a place to, to grow into or build onto or whatever we're going to do because it's not going to, the space isn't going to get any bigger here if we started coming in, morphing into this space. It's not going to change, the building has to change for us to actually coexist here. Because the biggest thing for the ambulance service right now is that they get to be one department. They can't be one department in three different towns. It just doesn't work. I mean, you can picture yourself taking your department and putting, you know, something out of uh, Mr. Cocott's house or putting it somewhere else. We see else. it every day. We're yeah. here, so I mean, we see how it operates and, and without and the management. So I mean, it's it's really it needs to get into one place, and we need to figure out what it's going to look like and morph into over the next five years. So especially if if you're talking about adding in the things that we <coughs> really felt that were important in doing this service, and that's like the blood pressure clinics at the senior center, oh, outreach for public health, you know, just general education and um, well-being checks. Um, we have more of those than we ever did before and, you know, it, we just want to make sure that that happens and that they're really active in our community and that that's not happening right now. And, and that's what was really important to me because that's a value added. Right. That's adding more to what we have already you know, what we already offer. Just broadening the school right. service. And I mean, we were focused, for... obviously, in getting on a paramedic service, right. level service, so that we all have, you know, good response and response times are down and stuff like that. But now we were talking about the extra stuff, the Cadillac stuff that a full-time employees, um, you know, are, would benefit right. us as a town. Where we have these employees, you know, then they can do extra stuff. With your permission, if, if there's any other questions that anybody has that the Board of Selectmen can answer, we'll gladly take them on. Or if there's some, any information, instructions you'd like to give us, it will be recorded so we'll know that it's it's uh, functionally there. Somebody, you got your TV on us here. It's calling in. <laughs> no, you can't. It's, it's taped. <laughs> not oh, live. It's not live? Not live. The satellite truck isn't up outside. Yeah. Oh, oh. Well, I do want to say that we're supposed to have an informational night for the elementary the school word roof out. sometime no. in uh, the week of the 22nd. So we don't have that date nailed down yet. Maybe it will be the 24th at our selectness meeting. I'm not sure. But you know, that's, that's part of it. Hopefully things go well at town meeting, we can continue on the way that we have with South County. But one of the things I've been speaking to our board about is some type of a cooperative arrangement with the fire districts going forward. It, the simple answer to staffing a second ambulance is hire more full-time people. So it's staffed, you don't have to worry, especially with dwindling amounts of volunteers. It's not always the most cost-effective method. So if you, as you move forward, if you're looking to hire full-time firefighters, if there's options for those to be firefighter EMTs, EMTs and options to work possibly to help fill, us, help fill that backup ambulance, 
I think we'd be more than open to sitting down and figuring out some type of financial arrangement to make it work for both parties, and then to you know utilize that staff as best as we can. Especially if you have a firefighter slash EMT right. who, when a call comes in, that person drives the ambulance while your paramedic goes with. Now you still have a ALS rated ambulance, but you still have a, a firefighter EMT here at the at the at the fire station, still there on call. Ready to go, so you don't, so, you know, you don't lose coverage. It's what it really boils down to, and, and I'd like to spin off of what Matt was saying is it's a service that we're trying to provide for our people. You know, the people are the people within our district, and because those are the people, those those are our bosses. Realistically, they're they're the customer, and that's what we need to do. Is we need to make sure that we take care of our customer. And when the primary can't, then that's when when we need to step up and step in, step in and do what we need to do. Um, you know, historically in the past we've always worked extremely well with Deerfield EMS. Um, and then late we've been doing quite a bit with uh, with assists. So, I mean, I don't think there's any issues, correct me if I'm wrong, Bill, with, with the department going ahead and, and, and assisting South County EMS, you know, within, within, within our boundaries. Um, I mean, that's, that's what we're here for. You know, we're here for the people. That's our job. We certainly appreciate all the help from both your agency, the police departments. I mean, it's the end of the day, we're here to take care of exactly. the community. Yeah, it's a team effort. Right. And I, I want to again reiterate the fact that we do appreciate the housing. Absolutely. Certainly. The courtesy of the, and, you know, the patience to work out some of the, I know, very rough times that has occurred from, from time to time, that basically, you know, you have the patience with us to make yeah. it work. And where it came out that anybody said that anybody was throwing out, we apologize for that misstatement. It was probably done out of frustration and not facts. And, you know, we hope that that can be left right. on the ground from now on yeah, and, exactly. and, and go away because it was not, you know, it's not true. Yeah, every opportunity I have, especially on the camera, I make sure that we bring that up. So <laughs> <laughs> just so that people don't see it the last time, they see it this time. Yeah. So it is. It's uh, we're very thankful. Any other questions? Like Just a little comment, maybe, if you taking your word saying, you know, working with the districts, maybe you look at changing the um, Board of Oversight and include someone from each fire district. That, I don't think is a bad idea. The only problem is we've got three fire districts, four, four. fire districts. Well, yeah. you've got... And then we'll add... But you have, I mean, yeah, I don't know, just... Yeah, we've got some spaces open up that we could actually have a dual enrollment that could start peppering that. So if somebody's interested in um, volunteering, we are definitely going to put some more people on the, uh, oh, and <laughs> on the board. And, and you don't want me on it up. You don't want me on it up. Do you remember how Bill became chief? Remember, yeah. how, remember, how, remember how everybody kind of like changed? He wasn't at that meeting, was he? <laughs> no, 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 I sat down first. <laughs> ah, okay. yeah. You know, Bill, Bill was also kind enough to sit in on many of the earlier well, meetings, meetings as we got yeah. started and was a great help, and we appreciate the time. I think he's that he probably put forth. got the record for uh, attendance of people that were not on the board, and maybe it, for some of the people who are on the board, too. Yeah. <laughs> and the only thought is if, if you were looking whether that transition happens or doesn't happen, will it make it go smoother if you start now having that representation there and what direction you're going that's all my thoughts kind of bad suggestion. can you help me remember to bring it up at the next board meeting or at least get it to zach because mm -hmm. i'll forget by tomorrow morning we can do that i got another two meetings uh, tonight that i have to go to so i, I think doug doug will, is writing it down right uh, no actually oh. no, that's right. <laughs> what, should i be writing down? <laughs> only questions <laughs> coming in <laughs> <up> the text <laughs> doug would you please make sure yeah. that mark follows up <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the right. tape. Hey, I got yeah. it. Hey, I, got I got you. It. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk. We'll, I'll play you tomorrow morning. All right. So, do you guys have anything else for for us? I mean, you know, obviously we're open to whatever, and um, you know, like Bill said, I think eventually at some point in time, we're we're not some point, but not eventually. Let me try this one again. Eventually, we are going to become full time. There's no doubt about it. I think, I mean, the, just what you're required to do, the training, yeah. absolutely. It's, it's just really lot. tough. It is. It's, it's hard to get people to commit. And the requirements change all the time, and it requires mm -hmm. more and more 
uh, time on their part. I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you could see, you, uh, even as not a person involved in this, you could see it years ago, mm -hmm. just the trend and, and the demographics. We just don't have a lot of young people that can afford to spend the time. Exactly. Well, I think, you know, you've seen it in police work. Everybody out there with a cell phone today records yes. everything. Absolutely. And when you're not at that level of professionalism <clears throat> that people expect, the first thing they want to do is call a lawyer and file a lawsuit. And they don't care what your intentions were or how good you tried to be. Um, I know that our fire districts work very hard to be as professional as possible. And part of the challenge is as you keep recruiting new members, it's probably two or three years of training to get somebody up to the level of being yeah. proficient enough. And a lot of money. And the money, you know, <laughs> and, then, and then you look at what's, what's the time frame on that person. I mean, I think the last study I read, two to three years to get them proficient, you get maybe a year or two out of them, and then something in their life changes, family, job, work, and then they go on the downhill slope. So it's a constant battle. No more than we experience with the ambulance. I mean, we're in this position today because of not only what the professional demands are, but also the demands of the service. I mean, I, I pulled out a report from a little over 10 years ago, and we had 100 calls that year. I mean, now we're well north of 400 calls in Deerfield. So it's, it's been a big change. I think you've seen a rise in your numbers as well as far as what your response rate has been. Well, I, you know, a, lot of, a lot of it now is fire prevention, you know, is getting out there. You don't have the big calls as you once had. You have the nuisance calls, but it's, it's the permitting it's the fire prevention, it's the inspections, inspections, you know, it's the administrative work. The education, mm -hmm. to keep it what you done. Exactly. It's so much better to have one guy going out and doing inspections and checking fire extinguishers and smoke detectors than to have to call out a crew of six to put a fire out. Yeah. And, down. and I know in talking to Dennis, he's made great strides to work across, um, across fields with the different inspectors in town to make sure he's going in hand in hand with them so everybody's getting the same picture and everybody's supporting one another, which I think is tr a tremendous asset to the community. Actually, I would like yeah. to comment on that, and I would just like to say that the relationship between the town and the fire district has really been wonderful. I mean, the teamwork between the on the inspection issues, um, when there is a fire, you know, the cooperation that we're, you know, to deem as a building safe or whatever is really good and, and has really improved, and I think it's wonderful. I mean, it's only to the benefit of everyone in town. You know, on the opposite end, I think the district would like to thank the town for allowing their employees. You know, we've got three of our, you know, one captain and two firefighters, or one lieutenant, one firefighter that works for the DPW. You know, and if they're available, you know, they're they're able to respond, and, and that's huge. That's huge. Like right right now during the day, we've got seven people that work in town that hopefully will be able to go on a call. You know, so I mean, we're fortunate. There's towns and districts out there that have two there's i think gill has zero that are in town during the day so if i can add just one thing um just an analogy came to my mind uh, imagine you're going to the grocery store and you only have four dollars to spend and you're trying to build a meal out of four dollars you're going to be eating ramen and and diet coke i think uh, for that four bucks but if you have seven or eight people all of whom have four dollars all of whom go to the grocery store now you can get the ingredients to actually make a pretty good meal and everybody can eat a lot better. And if you can imagine the same thing being true of an EMS service and a fire service or two districts working together or three towns working together to build a single emergency response service that includes both fire and ALS ambulance. We're talking about coming up against financial troubles. Everybody's got limited finances to be able to invest in this. But if everybody contributes some small part to it, what you're going to wind up with is something that everybody will benefit from. That will be a higher level service that will have greater responses or a greater response to any given emergency. And it's going to be a benefit for everybody. Um, maybe there's ways to think about it in that way. Well, I think so, that's what they're doing yeah. by asking us to put people on. Absolutely. committees and to yeah. share the responsibilities that we've shared and I think it's going to be a slow methodical thought process that will get us to the to the winning line yeah, start and moving forward just yeah. keep moving forward and don't Talk keep taking it. steps backwards and that's I that's the reason I'm here is to make sure that we're saying that, that we're willing, willing to move forward right exactly. we just need to make sure that whatever options are available that we research them and do 
do a full analysis of the facts for everybody, not just for you know, a small population. So I guess the next step is if you um, hear back from the FERCOG, yep. some kind of time frame, okay. um, we can facilitate meetings. Well, we're, gonna, we're gonna have to go back to, with what's on the table right now, what Doug just said, we're gonna look at the regionalization thought process because they're already doing that with a lot of other towns. They, that, that's on, been on the table for a long time. So they've already got people who understand regionalization of, of fire. So putting the two town units together is something that they could do fairly easy with the numbers that they've got. But they don't want to step into bees nest of the ambulance service. Right. So we Which can, no, we can at the same time, maybe the request can be reiterated to the COG where it's not hey, what would it take for us to, you know, mash these two things together? Instead of that being the request, maybe the request can be, can you help us facilitate a long-term conversation about emergency service and, and help us understand, you know, the various possibilities, what's out there, what's, what, what can we do? Um, a two, three-year long conversation about it. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's definitely going to take some time to go through. And that's, we as a town, the post I think would go to the talk and say, hey, listen, we're not seeing this adversarial. We're seeing it as a long-term process. Right. So if it's something that you guys can help facilitate, then let's rethink it and sure. bring it on yeah. the table that way. So. Cool. Okay. Great. Well, i got to get back to the library. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys. Coming. Appreciate it. I have to go to the library. <laughs> well, this presentation, and there's not much room in it, so watch the cable. Thank you very much, everybody. Oh, thank you. All right, so. Um, Thanks, Matt. So, the next part of our agenda, obviously, is uh, going back to uh, standard business. Review of the minutes of January uh, 14, January 14, 2016 meeting. Uh, do you have an opportunity to look at this? Later. Briefly, just. We've already got that comment. Um, you have to bear with me a second because I still need to kind of do a service. to make a friendly amendment to underneath old business cell tower uh, last sentence yep. uh, we want Phil to look over the final lease before we sign it in case he picks up on something from his expertise that we missed yep. I think that was kind of a crossover between um, the software system and the cell tower when it came to the minutes area um, so I'd like to want to remove strike it. I'd like to strike that you guys okay with that? Yes. So moved. Favor? Aye. Aye. Have the opportunity to continue looking at the rest of it? We're going to come and talk to the. Uh, yeah, where are you? Right here on uh, roof replacement. It says that I would come and talk to the farm under you and I were going to try to meet with the guy, but we never were able to do that. Right here. Right here. Yeah. That's about the uh, putting some extra. Uh, oh yes, roof, yes, the yes, stuff is, up in here. Yeah, that is correct. Um, I actually did speak with them about that. Yeah. Um, actually, they talked with Dennis earlier, stating that they, that was their plan anyway. Oh, okay. Um, they were going to go ahead and do that regardless. Very good. So what was that? The extra to go around the penetrations. Snow stops. Yeah, he was going to do stops. that anyway. He was yeah. going to do that regardless. Yeah. So, um, we were just trying to make sure because it wasn't specified yeah. in the stuff yeah. that we looked exactly. at. Exactly. So I, I, did, I did make a phone call to Lou. And then I also followed it up with a. We're getting um, on the old business. Email. No, oh, we're yeah. still trying to. We're still trying to do the minutes. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Anything else on the minutes? Good. Looking for a motion. I move 
move that we accept the amended minutes. That's okay. Favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Opposed? All in favor. In favor. Yeah. Old business. All right. Back to, sorry, Bill. Thanks for catching me on that, Bill. Uh, yes, I did go ahead and I got in touch with Lou. Um, I did talk to him about the, um, the additional for the snow guards for the perforations going through the roof. Um, we did follow it up with if it had to be a change order, it had to be a change order as far as an email was concerned. Lou said it wasn't a problem. They were, they were planning on doing that anyway. So um, we're all set with that. Um, I, I think. As we get towards the end of this, we should see what we have left over for funding, and it may make sense to do a second roof break, the mm -hmm. snow breaks up higher, especially in front of the bays, just to get that from coming off. I've been by a couple roofs lately, steel roofs, metal roofs, and I've noticed that they've had a couple going up. So, you know, if we've got the money, it may make sense. We can ask their opinion. You can inquire about it and find out what the additional cost would be above the bay doors. Yeah. I talked to him about it. He thought it was a great idea to do because it's already the snow was sliding over that one. Yeah, I see uh, that. We want to, yeah, no, already, you know, so. I agree. I mean, I believe that we've got. They didn't run into any problems up on the flat loop so far. Not that I'm aware of. Yeah. I think what you were supposed to meet with him on is that scupper hole that never took place. Yeah, because he never called me. No. He never showed. Nope. I knew you would talk to him about the leak and stuff, and he yeah, said that we're going to take care of that. Yeah, that's a scupper leak we were talking about. Right. That that one's been a problem since the building was built. I think they were going to build a sleeve or something. That's what he wanted yeah. to talk to him about. All right, I'll give Lou a, I'll give Lou another call. See what he needs. Get that taken care of. And I, I do agree with uh, you. Get uh, get a figure on what it would cost them to put. It shouldn't be that much anyway. That should be done anyway, regardless. Yeah. The snow stops above that, one way or another. Cool. Anything else on the roof, old business-wise? Sure. Yeah. Right, old business cell tower. Um, I talked with Donna again yesterday. Uh, once again, the things are still going back and forth between the two lawyers. Um, Donna goes ahead and she catches on something and she sends it to the... Verizon lawyers and Verizon lawyers look at it and say, well, you know, we really need to add this. So it looks like the last thing that they're trying to add, they being Verizon, is the ability to go and change out the equipment in the future as needed on the tower itself. And the reason why they're trying to add this into the contract is because otherwise, what they're saying, technically, each time they wanted to change out a different type of antenna, they would have to get some type of special permission through, because it's not part of the lease. And uh, I did talk with, with Tom Nolan in great length last night. Um, and that was basically what he explained to me was would be putting antennas on, taking antennas off, changing out the equipment uh, throughout, their, throughout their lease. So, Which makes yeah. sense. I mean, the right. way technology yeah. changes, exactly. you know, they're not going to be married to that um, same antenna. But I also told Tom and I told uh, um, Donna that, you know, I was going to bring it to the committee here and make sure that I have the blessings of the two of you before we go ahead and tell them to go ahead and finish off that last part of the lease. It's fine by me. Go ahead. All right. Okay. Okay. Very good. I'll give her a call tomorrow morning. All right. Um, anything else for the old business? Before we step into new business, do we want to address anybody in the audience that would like to speak? Any questions, comments? Thoughts, theories, since just I'm, here hanging out. Since I'm here, actually, I'll, I'll mention this. Uh, for the tape, it's Doug Finn, town, in, town, <laughs> interim town administrator. Hi, everybody. Um, town of Deerfield just awarded a renewal of a lease agreement on the tower up at Pecumtuck Rock. Um, off of Pine Hill Meadow, whatever the Pine name Nook. of the road. Pine Nook Road, there it is, Old all right. Pine Nook Road. Old Pine Nook Road. Um, we actually awarded it to the people who have been, who own the tower, uh, every, um, sorry, Western Mass Electric. Part of our RFP, though, is to ensure that towns, the town, or the police department, or the fire department has the right to place equipment on the tower as needed, um, with the understanding that so long as it doesn't interfere with other commercial antennas on the tower. Mm -hmm. So um, since we're in the negotiation process of the lease arrangement now, 
the award's been made, but we're still working on the lease. I wanted to make sure that you folks knew that there's an opportunity now to put some equipment on that tower if you want to, if you feel the need, whether it's a repeater or something like that. And they're going to be part of their process is they're going to be taking that whole tower down, putting a whole new tower back up. It's going to, it's the same exact tower. I don't still know why they're replacing still, it. Still lattice. It's still a, a three leg lattice to uh, so the same height, but it's going to be just slightly sturdier. It's going to be more rigid in design, I guess. Um, but now would be the time to talk to them about getting equipment on the tower, I think. Um, and just wanted to let you know that it, it can be done free it's of charge. Available. It's not a, a lease arrangement or anything like that. So Perfect. whether that's anything that is useful to you, I don't know. But. We'll bring it up. I mean, uh, the Franklin, the FERCOG's got a, a radio committee that oversees the whole radio, right. you know, infrastructure for the whole county. So we can bring it up to them to see if that's something sure. they're interested. I know they're they're doing a lot of work. We're fortunate because you know we've got Toby, we've got Shelburne, so we're 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 pretty well covered. Yeah. Okay. You know, and then plus we've got our own. So. Okay. Yeah. Please forward it on, and it's there. It's a benefit that we can take advantage of. So. That's Thank it. You. Thanks. And they are going to put up the DPW repeater, right? If you you tell me where, what that gear is, yeah. Okay. Absolutely, yeah. It's any town equipment. So, perfect. If you've got a satellite dish you want to put up, I'm going to call it Deerfield satellite dish. I mean, whatever you want to do, that's okay. great. Yeah. It's sweet. You can get HBO. Whatever. That was good. Matt, you got anything? Just nothing just, to add. Nothing to add. Just hanging out. I'm going to be heading out shortly. Okay. Yeah. But thank you. <laughs> I just it. wanted to. You know, make sure that you know I didn't go too far, and you guys just happen to listen to us do our business. No, I'm I'm okay. I'm appreciative for the conversation, and appreciate the opportunity to be able to get together and, and talk about this. I think the communication is great. Again, yeah. appreciate all the hospitality and making us feel welcome here. Well, you know, you're welcome anytime. So, and if it's official, just let us know. And it's on the agenda, and then we're all covered. Okay. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Here's me walking in front of the camera. Yeah. Thanks, Doug. Thanks. All right. Um, old business. Do we want to continue with the budget? Do we want to go into some new business and chief's report and look at the warrant and then look at the other afterwards? So, all right. So, any new business at this point in time that you're aware of? Um, actually, I'm sorry, I really kind of have to go back to old business. I, I spaced out the rescue truck. Uh, presently right now, we only have four people or four companies that have um, requested the specifications for the rescue truck. The last one, I really don't understand why they even bothered because they're strictly a radio intercom company. Um, they don't... They're not in the business to build fire apparatus, so I'm really not sure why they took paper, but uh, they took paper, and as far as I know, nothing's been physically taken from here, because I noticed in the bin, um, all three packets are still there. So the way, like I said, the way it stands right now is we've, we've got four bidders that are out there, and hopefully everybody's going to have a nice sharp pencil and come back with some really decent numbers for us. Um, I did get the, the, the contact person from Mary out in Boston area, and I did speak with the woman. I did explain to her exactly what our concerns were. And I'm going to take out the FY years because FY kind of confuses somebody now and people now and then. So if next year is our last payment being 2017, if we take delivery of the rescue, if all this happens in August, we will not be required to make a payment on that until August of 2018. So there will be no two payments in the same fiscal year. Yeah. We have two payments left on the ladder truck. Correct. One this one October this year. and one next October. Correct. So 16 and 17. And then, again, hypothetically, if the rescue does come through, then that payment would be due in 2018. So there would be no double payments, there'd be no lapse, everything would, would work out extremely smooth. Um, which again would hopefully just keep our tax rate basically exactly where we're at right now. And we're still able to uh, um, upgrade our equipment. Keep up with our planning schedule on replacing the truck every what, seven and a half years or eight years, somewhere in that Yeah, I mean, that's, we're already, yeah. 
behind. So yeah. but, uh, we're, we're making progress. So that's all we can ask. Yeah. Um, so that's all I got for, for the rescue for right now. You know, we're coming up on, uh, I want to say March 10th is when they're due. Uh, we can open them. We can look at them at that point in time. <coughs> and then we would be going to the um, district at the annual meeting and requesting that they support us in the purchase of this. And if that happens, then that following Thursday, which I believe is the 14th of April, we would be able to go ahead and uh, forward the bit. So obviously everything's being held back until we figure out exactly if we can do this or not. Right, uh, any other new business? Under new business, this, uh, as far as the roof goes. Yep. Uh, the stuff that we've got here. Uh, they've got uh, ranges. Is that? It, it just, I looked at that. All it is, it's the same exact thing. It's just a matter of how long. Well, these how many years? This, yeah, is, or, this sorry, is all it's, set it's, for three years, but three but, different interest yeah, rates. Yeah, three different interest rates. So well, let's see if we can go with the lowest interest rate. Because nothing else besides that term is different. Yeah. The payments are almost exactly the same, except for you know within within a half a point of each other. Okay. So my opinion would be to go ahead and see about what we can do about getting that for. That's one on the two percent interest. Two percent. Just personal opinion. Which percent would you go to? Two percent. Uh, cheapest one. Two percent. For three years. For three years. Why should you pay more? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, because when I was looking at them, I'm going, well, what's the difference here? You know, and, yeah. and, and again, I, I looked at it, and then I, I pulled them apart and set I, them exactly I, I side by side, and I'm, I'm going... Yeah, well, it took me a while to see the difference. Yeah, there is, yeah. except for yeah. the interest rate. <laughs> well, that may be at the time that you take the loan, it may go from two. Oh, that could very well be. Yeah. 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 Three. But yeah. whatever it is, got to yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Whatever, whatever the cheapest That's, rate is. Well, that's, that's, that's what I usually do. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's at that time. Yep. Yep. Now, on the time time schedule on the roof, they looks like they're short of a little metal, huh? Yeah. It came in today. It Sitting did? out on okay. the side. Yeah. Okay. If it didn't, um, if they worked a full week today, their plan was to be done tomorrow. But they missed two days, so that would put us out to next week. So we use that. So we got to jump on Lou then if we want to have them add the other stop because we want to make sure that they'll probably, care they'll have to probably they, order it before yeah. they take the lift out of here. Right. Well, that's what I'm thinking is before they start remobilizing their equipment. Yes. So cool. we'll have them get it and put it on because that's a very good idea. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else for new business? Because I do have one thing. Do Certified free cash king? Yeah. Well, I didn't get that. I gave that. you a, No, I didn't. No, it was a bank thing when I gave you. I gave you a minor. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, free cash of, what did I say, 83,808. Right. That's as of July 1st, 2015. Well, Bill told me that. Yeah, but this is where in 2016. Yeah, after the meeting, if um, we wanted to, you know, order the things we could. And I thought that you had to wait until July 1st. And he says, no, it means no. that you could do No. This is a free. From it's available right the now. The stuff we didn't have in the beginning when we had the meeting, this will authorize us to do That's that. correct. So that would be the the items within the three articles. The three articles. That would be the garage doors, the uh, computer stuff, and the software. Software. And then engine three. And then engine three. Yeah. Okay. Was that on that, or was that a new one? I got it. So actually, those. So actually, and correct me if I'm wrong, but still technically, those 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 still need to go back on the warrant because we didn't vote on them at the last annual meeting, correct? No. Okay, well, part of that was, was uh, $15,000 in the stabilization fund. 
right. But none of those, we, we couldn't vote on any of those. Because, because we didn't because have the available we didn't, we didn't have cash. cash. Available so now cash. we're, because we're so close, we're not going to have a special meeting. Okay. One so, was 7500 for the well, door opener. The other one was a... If it uh, needs to be voted on, you can do it at the, at the annual third. meeting. Yeah. Which so, well, so we don't need a special meeting. Yeah. Well, exactly. It's but too close to the annual meeting. It has to go if the, on the annual meeting. It has to go on that warrant. Though, right. It has to go to correct. Can mm -hmm. I have something in the article if, for the truck? Now, let me just yeah. clarification. Yeah. Thing. The warrant is actually my, for did it the next year. Okay. Do you have to have That's one not, ahead of that yeah, in order to do that? Well, they, they be have to be, be, set to be separate. Not. You'll have to yeah. ask our legal counsel. Yeah. I, I think we. I think we've been. Had to do this in the but, past. But well, you can after. conduct it at that meeting. Right, but it can't. It's going to be a separate. It isn't going to be on the twenty. Yeah. That would be what twenty sixteen and twenty seventeen yeah. fiscal year. Right. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 I believe it has to be uh, another one. Well, another warrant. Yeah. But we can get that squared away with Don. That is correct. Yeah. And the other one was for the software system. So the only other thing to go along with that is because I know that we there were some issues with the verbiage within our warrant articles. I think one of them said that instead of unanimous, it, it technically was supposed to say uh, two-thirds two vote was one of the issues. Um, I've been in contact with Donna. I did forward her that information, and she in turn is going to get in touch with, I can't remember the gentleman's name. Um, you're talking about the uh, transfers? Yeah, just the verbiage yeah. on, on the issues that we were having. Well, that's what with. Uh, uh, Bill told me. Which one? Terry. Terry, okay. Yeah, yeah Don, 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 Don is going to call Terry direct. He, he just told me to put in parentheses. Yeah. Note. You know, it has to have a two-thirds vote. Okay. That's what he told me yesterday. And that was the only issue that they had because when we went to the assessors to well that that yeah those two there right. and then the other one was for the loan okay um i think that we had said that uh uh it was unanimous but then it's, i think that it unanimous that when you get a loan like that you've got to have the two-thirds two you've got well. to write down how many people are there you know who goes got it. even though you know it carried right yeah, so like, so like you said on this one here, Article so, 7 so was to what go ahead and transfer. About, I checked with um, <laughs> Terry. Right. And he's, you know, the one that I send all the... Yep, yep. Uh, so so the, the lawyer is going to go ahead and she's going, he, she is going to contact him again just yeah, to well, make sure, I, just to make sure there's nothing else. I'm going to let the lawyers and the <coughs> DOR yeah. let them play their, yeah, let them I, dance. Let them do their thing. Get it prepared. I have sent to her to be uh, checked. Right. So. Good. He's good on that. Okay. Move on. All right. I got one more thing. All right. This is a letter that was given to me, 120, 2016, to South Dakota Fire Prudential Committee from John Pachurik. And again, bear with me a little bit because this is a photocopy, so it's a little tough to read. Um, but it basically looks like long range planning. They'd like to see a long-range planning committee put together within here the district. I request that you put in a figure, example, $10,000 in your annual budget for a future long-term finance planning study. I'm also going to request that the town of Deerfield look for grants also. The study would be to look at all fire and related services by South Deerfield fire department initiating a request this puts you in the driver's seat i cannot attend your february prudential committee member but i would be interested in assisting <clears throat> south Dakota fire district maintain their i can't see i can't read it sorry through the upcoming ems uh south county uh, ems service debate i'm looking forward to it uh helping south Deerfield in any way possible Thank you very much for your time, John P. Butcher. So, inadvertently, we kind of <clears throat> we kind of did this to a point that, you know, uh, reaching out to the Cog, looking to see what it would be for 
merging the districts, um, and then just kind of see where it all kind of plays out from there. Um, I'm not sure if somebody want, wanted to make a motion at some point in time to go ahead and put this maybe possibly into our, our budget or not. Um, what are your thoughts? What's the ten thousand dollars for? Well, it would be for to pay for. It, is basically what they're he, what he's what he's asking is, is he's requesting we put some money off to the side. If for some reason we can't get a grant of some kind, that there would be monies available to fund this long term planning study. Something you can think about. We got we got another month. So think about it. Well, who would know what this study would cost to begin? With? Well, we don't, and that's it's it's almost like capital improvement. You know, it's it's like collectively, like you know, like we've done in the past, the roof. We knew the roof was going to be needed to be done, so we started putting capital money away. We know the parking lot needs to be done. At some point in time, so we started putting money away for the cap for the, for the been, parking lot. We've been lot. doing that, right? Right, exactly. So what I think he's trying to get at is, is because he was around, he was actually sitting in this chair at that point in time, way back when when that was still happening. Um, he's just looking to see if he can do the same thing with some type of fund for long-term planning study. So it's, it's a request that was brought to us from a district um, taxpayer. In and other words, he's responding to the ad in the paper if anybody wanted to have an article in the paper, you know, for this year. He wants you to have an article, right? No. It's just no. Uh, a suggestion to the Prudential Committee. Okay, so he's not asking... As, as I, re I hear that, is that correct? Yeah. He, he, is, he is requesting us to think about putting some money away for a long-term planning study. Nothing to do with putting anything on a warrant on, on town meeting or... Well, or I, like I just that. didn't know whether he was requesting you to have an article in the... No. On the warrant. Okay. No. Well... This actually like falls under Article 22. <clears throat> to see if the district will vote its officers any instructions. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. I mean, I think if you're going to eventually do a study that isn't free, we shouldn't put the only money up. Mm -hmm. You should go... if. Well, the town and both districts and fund it equally if you're going to do something like that. Why should this district fund the entire study? Oh, agreed. So, like I said, this is just something that was put forward to us, which actually would fall underneath, like like Don said, uh, Article 22. Uh, the only issue with that is, is that would not come into play until FY18, because right now we're looking to ratify our FY17 budget that's up and coming. Um, so that would be another year off. That's all I'm making just so you're aware. So you guys can go ahead and think about it. You know, obviously by no means we're trying to look for an answer right here and now. <coughs> we still have, <coughs> excuse me, we still have next, next month to go ahead and kind of finish up and go through, uh, finish up our budget. So at that point, we decide next month, you want to add this in, that's good. If you want to add in $5,000, you want to add in $100,000, you want to add in $1,000. It, it's all depends on which way you want to go, if you want to go that direction at all. So. You can think about it. Yeah. All right. Uh, Anything else on that? No. Any other new business? All right. Can we skip over to uh, Chief Report, please? Uh, let's see. Open berm season started January 15th. It'll run through May 1st. Uh, so far this year, it's been uneventful. We've had 35 permits issued compared to 20 back in 2015 for the same time period. <clears throat> District 4 hazardous materials team and members of the South Deerfield Fire Department conducted a drill at Crop Productions on Wednesday, January 27th. It was very successful. It actually allowed the hazardous materials team to become familiar with crop, crop Productions layout and their on-hand inventory. Um, they probably had about 50 members up here, uh, probably about six different pieces of apparatus. 
and they did a, a full-blown scenario with uh, some leaked materials. Uh, we had five members attend uh, training classes up at GCC that was put on by the Franklin County Fire Chiefs Association. Uh, they said it was very beneficial. It's the one we've been doing, I think, every year for the past four years. So it works out that it's, it's local. It had a small fee attached to it. Uh, Dennis and I reviewed the district's fee schedule. You take a look uh, in your packet that I've given you. Um, you know, we, we compared it to surrounding communities and what their fee structure is. I'd like you guys to review it and hopefully approve it today. So that way we can, um, we can start, <coughs> excuse me, in on it. Uh, really what we're doing is, the big thing is most of our we were just charging a permit fee. We weren't charging an inspection fee. So uh, I would say 90% of our surrounding communities charge both the permit fee and the inspection fee. And they're usually uh, both $25 except for, um, for the um, above ground tanks and then multi-units. So. Makes perfect sense. I mean, we do need to make sure we're covering our costs. I mean, that's really what it's all about. And I think all you have to do is just, uh, I think, make the motion to accept it and vote on it. And well, I think I would like to make a motion to uh, uh, adopt this fee schedule revised and approved um, as of February 11, 2016. Second. Favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Very good. Thank you very much. Zero, zero. Uh, I'm just going to write approved and a date on it. It says it, it's already printed on it. Oh, it's right here. On the approved is right. Just, just certainly just, approved. Yeah, there we go. I, I put a check mark. Okay. CarQuest installed an Oxbox, which is good. Um, and then I didn't update the, inc the incident report for January 14th through February 10th is attached. And it looks like I didn't input the, the calls compared to last year. My apologies in the inspection report for 2016 is attached. Now the only item, last item I have is, Mary, we got that grant from, the, from uh, the Department of Fire Services. I signed it, but they don't have paperwork to say that I'm an authorized signer. So if you could just fill out the top and then sign that with your title and fill that information oh. out, that way I could send it along. Yeah. I, there, it's on file with the uh, Department of Conservation when we get the, uh, that, the other grant. Where's the address for the, did you have another book? Yeah, I'll just if you give it back to me, I'll send it along. Oh, okay. You make a copy. <laughs> no, 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 don't sign it. You sign down there. Oh, okay. Um, like, uh, well, Mary, well, we got a, it was for fire education. Okay, I uh, remember. Yeah, it's the one that Pat and Dennis worked yeah. on. We got $2,300, yeah. so. Okay. Next year, they'll, we're gonna go for the, uh, the student one and also the senior one. Okay. Very um, good. To kind of go back to the, uh, the District 4 Hazmat, when they came up and they did that uh, drill of crop productions, uh, they went through and they seen the Pre-planning the the book on how it was put together, uh, the one that Dennis was was very much bulldogish about trying to make sure all these people in town are having these. Uh, it's a huge benefit to us because it gives us a huge heads up, and they were extremely impressed on how well it was put together. So kudos to to Bill and Dennis and Steve and all those that made sure that that was put together properly. Um, that hands down, I think it's it's a huge thing. It's it's definitely come out very very well. So thank you. We just need to bless you. <laughs> it's not good to hold it in like that. Um, we have anything else for the chief's report? Okay. I don't know. I didn't I can enter that in. You signed it for us too. That would be like real quick. Yeah. Okay, um, you need to take about a three minute break if anybody's okay with that. Yeah. You want to take a break?